Matt Newton welcoming you to the Don Lane Show, seen right throughout Australia on the National Nine Network and affiliate stations. Tonight's special guest is Don Lane. And now, here's Don. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. I like in the corner when they want to wave, but they don't really want to, and they go... <laughs> it's nice. Hi. Hi. That's good. And welcome to the Don Lane Show, coming to you live on my 47th birthday. Hank, I never thought... Uh, Don, excuse me. Morton. Uh, <laughs> Mort, just say that again, exactly what you said then. I said, welcome to the Don Lane Show, coming to you live on my 47th birthday. 47th <laughs> You're leaving out some fruit picking seasons, aren't you? You're 47. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I did a you're 47. It's 47, yeah, I was born in 1933. If you're 47, I'm Kamal. <laughs> I had a feeling you were going to do something like this. I will show you something which I took, I sent for this, just so especially I would have it. The birth certificate. You open it, you take a look. Go ahead. Have a look. How are you today, said the <laughs> elephant, as I work for the wonderful to dream the impossible dream, to see the unreachable fall. <laughs> really are ah, wonderful, wonderful. We do a one-liner and you turn it into a Kamal medley. That, <laughs> really, that really is his birth certificate. Yes, or close, or something, a reasonable facsimile thereof. Yes, yes, signed like, by Harry S. Truman, isn't yes, it? Look, I really believe in the saying that you are only as old as you feel. Because at 47, I can still do everything that I did at 21. <laughs> Which just goes to show you how pathetic I was at 21. <laughs> right. This time tomorrow, well, not this time, a little later than this time tomorrow, I'll be in Honolulu. And it's, no, it's really nice. Honolulu is wonderful, except in Honolulu, everybody expects a big tip. That's for any service at all. Last year, I checked into my hotel room and I said to the porter, where are my bags? And he said, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Lane, but when you gave me a whole dollar, I got so excited that I dropped them out the window. That's a wonderful thing. <laughs> anyway, let me quickly tell you about... Mr. Lane? It's, yes, it is. I have a singing telegram from Mr. Flim Flam. I nearly well, forgot his name. You really forgot. Mr. Flim just, just a minute. Did, you, did anybody ever tell you you look very much like Normie Rowe? No. They haven't told you? Yes, amazing similarity. Mr. Flim Flams. Do you? Oh, yes. Okay, well, let's hear it. Just... Hum, 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 hum. Yankee Donald came to town. <laughs> Six foot four and bandy. Oh. <laughs> I didn't write it, I'll oh. sing it. <laughs> and I'll kill the fellow that wrote it. <laughs> Who would know that he would use those kind of words to Randy? <laughs> Let me, uh, let me quickly tell you about the show. There are a lot of surprises in store for tonight, I'll tell you that. Uh, firstly, Academy Award winning actress and full-time charmer, you are going to love this lady, Cloris Leachman will be here. A wonderful lady. And, uh, and from, uh, from the motion picture Superman 2, the very lovely, the very unpredictable, and the very zany Sarah Douglas will be here. You like that, too? And, uh... Uh, Bert and I and everybody else on the show became a big fan of this other lady that's with us tonight. Uh, uh, she's delightful, she's beautiful, and she is extremely witty, a very wonderful person. And I know that you all share in, uh, in our enthusiasm in having her back on the show. Poetess, English poetess, Pam Ayers is back with us again. <laughs> and, uh,
Bernard King is here slaving over Kitchen in the Back. Just <laughs> slaving. Like and one of the superstars of cricket, our very own Dennis Lilly, is here as well. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> I keep reeling off these names. Everybody's looking at their watches and going, what? I think 2 o'clock will finish. And the bloke with the number one record in the country, singing live, shut up of your face, to Joe Dolce. <laughs> and of course, uh, Bertram has a few surprises. The producers tell me there are a few other surprises. We, I really don't know what they're all about. I don't really want to know. I think we'll just all have a good time together and enjoy ourselves. And. Uh, we're going to start off with a number. What better way than we'll sing a song for you, okay? Put your hands together. Here we go, Graham. Look out. Now, yeah, look out. This night. On a wonderful day like today, I defy any cloud to appear in the sky. I dare any raindrops to pop in my eye on a wonderful day like today. On a wonderful evening like this, when the moon is as big as a yellow balloon. Hey, the sparrows are singing in tune on a wonderful evening like this. On an evening like this, I could kiss everybody. I'm so full of love and goodwill. Let me say, furthermore, I'd adore everybody to come and dine. The pleasure's mine, and I will pay the bill. May I take this occasion to say that the whole human race should get down on its knees. Show them they're grateful for evenings like these And the world's in a wonderful way On a wonderful day like today Uh, you may have noticed uh, there was a little um, little piece of uh, different bits from the show there. These are going to be all, all throughout the course of the program. We're going to be showing you little reminiscences of the year and uh, what's taken place. Uh, when one of the world's most talented and funniest men, this fella here, Harvey Corman, uh, was asked to describe 
another of the world's most talented and funny women, Cloris Leachman. He said, Cloris is talented and lovely and quite mad. <laughs> she's always fun and stimulating, and she cares about what she's doing. Uh, it proves it in her work. Cloris Leachman is an Academy Award and Emmy Award winning actress, probably best known to TV viewers for her portrayal of Phyllis, the neurotic neighbor of the Mary Tyler Moore fame. Uh, a lot of you remember that. They went on to her own series as well. She's in Australia with her latest movie. It's called Herbie Goes Bananas. <laughs> and uh, you all know Herbie, the little uh, Volkswagen that uh, has a mind of his own. Well, here she is in a delightful scene from the movie where she's doing everything in the world to make herself sexy to and attract the attention of Captain Blythe, who's played by Harvey Corman. Here it is. Gorgeous. Just magnificent. I always felt, Captain, that you have a deep appreciation for beauty. I've never seen anything like it. Any man of the sea who wouldn't want her rolling under him is ready for dry dock. Wow! A bit of a letdown. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome the very talented and the very lovely Miss Cloris Leachman here. <laughs> amazed. I'm amazed. I didn't even know you had dancers and all this wonderful. I would have dressed, my dear. You didn't? Have, I yes. think you look terribly sexy in that outfit. Well, that's I, what, that's, I, think I that's didn't nice. know what to wear. Imagine away from home like this and not knowing. <laughs> <that>. <laughs> oh, it's, it's very exciting to be here. I've been wanting to come to Australia all my life and finally I made it. Look how I got here in a little Volkswagen. That's right, yeah. yes, Herbie the Volkswagen. How did, uh, what did you think about Australia before you came? I mean, did you have uh, um, opinions well, or visions? Well, it looked or? sort of like this. Yeah. That's all I knew, and it said Australia on it. That was about it, It's hey? just a flat thing that you can, it's like a map. I didn't know. There, there's kangaroos here and there, I suppose. And, um, yes. Oh, well, I knew there were cities, but I didn't know. I, I went, oh, yeah, everybody, and they comb their hair and dress, and we look pretty much alike. And every once in a while, we can't understand each other. I yeah. sound as funny to, to uh, them as they sound to me sometimes. Yeah, that's true. We say, what was that again? And we yeah. get it all straightened out. I've had a wonderful time meeting different people, though, and, and seeing. I've traveled a bit. We flew in a little plane to Brisbane, not Brisbane, Brisbane. Right, yes, that, that's the first sign. That's, that's the first giveaway <laughs> that you're a newly arrived well, American. You say I've, Brisbane. Yes, it right. was Brisbane. Yes. A beautiful <laughs> place. And, of course, Sydney and then uh, Coffs Harbor, where... Uh, Nice place. They flew somewhere. 40 of the press in uh, on a uh, DC-3, hmm. which we used to go from Des Moines, Iowa to Chicago in, in the 40s, I remember. And it was still, say, it was still flying, just indestructible. Thank God we got here all right. And uh, um, anyway, they had a great big celebration uh, in the Banana Republic of uh, Coffs Harbor. Oh, because right, yes, because Herbie goes bananas. Oh, I right. see. I didn't even know about that. Yeah. Isn't that lovely? What did you do up there? Did you meet any, any oh, special we, dignitaries that you remember? Oh, we uh, met everybody. We, uh, we all got fingerprinted, and there were people, you know, if you, if you, you do, say the wrong word, they oh. shoot you dead without oh, right, a trial. Right, yeah, right, it's, yes. it's very, yeah. Uh, did you meet the, uh, the premier of Australia, Mr. Peterson? Was he there? Or? No, I think he'd been shot. He'd have been heard, shot. Had he I been shot? I heard that he was being detained. Mm. Not sure. What well, they'll do anything to celebrate up there. They yeah, they <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was hoping they would serve banana daiquiris, but I think we got a little fruit aid of some kind instead. I didn't know you drank. I thought you well, were. Well, I wouldn't a... normally, but you know, banana daiquiri seems to go with it all. Yeah. You, well, you do. You are having a party afterward, aren't you? Yes, there's a yes. We, nice. we have an end of the year party. Are you intending to come? Well, you invited me. Did you know that? Uh, no, I didn't. I haven't remember. accepted yet. I you have haven't. to see how it goes. Can I make an invitation now? Yeah, <laughs> I thank have you. to see how the interview goes. <laughs> well, they're making kiwi and things out there. I thought that would be good. I like that. Kiwi fruit. I yes. love kiwi fruit. Yes. Yeah, so you've seen Bernard King cooking something up out yes, there, obviously. But yes. But the kiwi is very valuable back in uh, in the United States. The kiwi fruit. Yes. Yes. 
the mm. birds, and I haven't yeah. met one of those yet. Yeah. <laughs> I think I get to hold a koala bear, right. puppy, whatever you call them. Oh, a little. Puppy. <laughs> What's the difference? They make the same mistakes. Yeah. They koala do, bear. really. Oh. <laughs> Well, well. <laughs> <laughs> tell me about working for Disneyland. This is what your third or fourth picture for Disney. Third one. Third. Mm -hmm. What is so special about working for Disney? I know there are they a lot of people. They feed you well. Do they? they feed you well. Yeah. Feed you well, and they uh, no. It, the studio is very, very. Uh, you're impressed first of all with the how clean it is, and little gardens and uh, green grass, and and everybody smiling, and it's they're wide streets with really no cars on them, people walking and. Yeah. It's a, a gentle place, and people love their jobs there. Yeah, anybody I have ever met who has worked at the Disney Studios, it's like a, a major breakthrough to be able to work for Disney Studios. It is. I, I feel uh, it's a compliment to have been invited back to be in another film. And mm. uh, what else? Oh, I did the North Avenue Irregulars. Did that come here? That was a lot of fun with a lot of good I people. I don't remember. There was someone that they changed the name to Hills Angels or something. Uh, one of those movies, was the name was changed. I don't remember which one. Anyway, listen, let me talk. Let's talk. Let's, say, let's take a look at a scene from this motion picture. Oh. Uh, in this scene, uh, Herbie goes bananas. This Volkswagen with the mind of its own um, uh, is in the middle of a bull ring here. Oh, yes. We went to, to all sorts of places to make this film. Uh, Puerto Vallarta and Guadalajara and Tijuana and uh, Los Angeles and all kinds and places north of there with mm. orange groves and things. Well, you're in the, in the, in the, in the Volkswagen with Harvey Korman and, and, a, and a young Spanish boy. darling girl. little boy from Mexico. Uh, <clears throat> he's so appealing. We just loved him. And um, his father was a vaudevillian. Uh, ah. So it was interesting to watch it. And in his 70s, and this young boy and a young wife he had, but this young boy who... The father was so hopeful for, and, and he's darling. You'll see his face. Well, here's Cloris Leachman, this young boy, and Harvey Coleman in a scene from this Herbie Goes Bananas. Herbie is the Volkswagen and has a mind of his own. Does what he wants, I think. Oh, Whatever yeah. He wants. Here they well, are. Wouldn't here. you? Yes. <laughs> Levanta, Levanta. Please get us out of here, kid. I'm not asking for myself, but I'm very worried about this lady. How thoughtful. Just shut up. Pasen por esa puerta. Rápido. Señor policía. That's first gangway. Move it. Kirby Goes Bananas starts on December the 19th uh, at all Grady Union Theatres, so you'll be able to see the motion picture as well. Uh, talk to me about a, a statement that you once made. Uh, you said, all my life I fought against cliches. Oh. And here I am saying them all. This was when you were accepted uh, an, uh, an award. Was it the Academy Award? award? Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, what do you mean you fought against cliches? Uh, oh. Being stereotyped, you mean, or saying stereotypes? All of that. Things? Just to... In acting, I suppose, uh, not to do things the way everybody's done them for years, to try to find a new way. Mm. And I think out of that, uh, I've been able to find uh, characters. That's true, because in, in one of the, um, uh, the first Young Frankenstein, which mm -hmm. was the first Mel Brooks movie, by the way, I envy you working with those mad people. Like oh, Mel I envy Brooks myself. It's it's a, we just yeah. made another film in London with him. Did you? One. Oh, I wish I could. I just oh. love him. He's just fantastic. But uh, you worked uh, in that, and you played a German nurse. And then they wanted you to play that same German nurse it's in the, the next movie. the same kind of character that he wrote again for well, me. Well, you changed it, right? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I did everything different. Is that yes, <laughs> I mean, I was just kind of a nurse, you know, the first time. Mm -hmm. Stay close to the candles. The yeah. staircase. Can be treacherous. <laughs> and the next one, I said, how do you want me to do this? He said, I said, well, I can just do that. And anyway, I had already kind of done everything the opposite. I, well, when we, we first, I was called in for a costume uh, fitting, and, uh, <laughs> and young Frankenstein, I'd wanted to be sort of a meat and potatoes uh, chairman, you know, what a big a sauerkraut and potatoes. Yeah, sorry, yeah. <laughs> and he said, no, no, I don't want a caricature. I said, no, but just a little meat, just a little potatoes and sauerkraut. <laughs> so I, you know, put a little. Yeah. 
And uh, <clears throat> I think it sort of worked on him because when he wrote the next script, I went in for this costume fitting, and here were these two ice cream cone <laughs> And this white nurse, I was another nurse, or I was a nurse, and um, so all of this uniform had been fitted yeah. to these uh, appendages. And here was this little tiny neck and this little tiny <laughs> face and these two little tiny arms coming out, and it didn't look like it was part of me, so I asked them to start patting me here, they did sort of balance. So I got kind of a dowager's hump here, and then still the neck, so I said, Maybe we could go out here this way, and that didn't look, didn't do much. So I said, well, try it up this way. So we got up higher and higher until, I, you know, I almost didn't have any neck. I had a short neck. Right. Yeah. And these big front things here. <laughs> the neck. And then um, the only thing to do was to pull your neck down more. Mm -hmm. And then um, I didn't want them to see my teeth because that's, you know, everybody's, I think if I smile, that's sort of, my, the one thing you can tell, and my nose, so <laughs> I had, and I had a black wig on, and I had, bl I made black eyebrows, and um, I put a lot of, of, of thin mouth with bright red, I wanted to be a cheery nurse. Oh, really, yes. Yeah. Sort of a bull dyke, I thought, kind of, You're real right, yeah. powerful. <laughs> and I put lipstick on, <laughs> and then it got on my teeth, so I just let it stay there. Mm -hmm. You know, she wouldn't, she just does it without looking. And right. then I had to tuck out of the corner of my mouth so he wouldn't see my teeth. So now I'm saying, now I have a cigar and we're after dinner. And I remember, did you, did you see High Anxiety? I don't know if it even came here to Australia. Yeah, I, I think it think did. It, yes, it did. Yes, it did. Yeah. Anyway, Dick Van, uh, uh, Dickie Van Patten says uh, they're having a big, long <laughs> meeting. Uh, Mel Brooks comes to this crazy, loony place mm -hmm. and uh, as the new administrator. And, of course, we're all the bad guys, Harvey Corman and I. And uh, Dr. Ashley's had a mysterious death, and uh, Mel Brooks is trying to find out what's gone wrong. And uh, Dickie Van Dyke says, uh, Van Patten said, "Well, it's a uh, Dr. Ashley didn't like." I say the drapes. Mel Brooks says the drapes. I said, "Yes, uh, Dr. Ashley felt that uh, color has a great deal to do with the well-being of the emotionally disturbed." <laughs> and Mel Brooks looks around. It's all just madness. I don't know. I think it must be. He just scared the hell out of me. On, you know, put a mustache on. Just penciled a mustache on. Everything. Just to look different. Listen, you didn't get Harvey Corman in that movie. Uh, he obviously had other things on his mind. So we thought there's no reason for you to come to Australia and not be able to at least be escorted by a very handsome ship's captain. Oh, so how we thought, sweet. Well, we thought by way of saying thank you for coming in and saying goodbye and, and letting you off to do the interview, we would have a ship's captain come out here from the love boat. We have a wonderful... <laughs> Dolce has become quite a recording sensation in Australia. He was born in the U.S., the product of an Italian-American background, and he has certainly made his mark here. Uh, his Italian send-up recording of Shut Up Your Face first hit the charts. Believe it, that this, this song first got on the charts at number two, and now, one week later, it sits at the top. Now, it's impossible to hear this song and not spend the next few days humming it. Continuously. <laughs> Walk around the house and what? So many you know. Anyway, I, I couldn't wait to get this fellow on the show. I'm, I'm not only am I happy for his success, but I reckon it's one of the great novelties of the year. Anyway, here he is live with a shut up of your face, Joe Dolce. Yeah. Kiss. Got to follow stupid rules, but they're making me sick. 
just to make a lousy box. I got to feel like a fool. And the mommy used to say all the time, What's the matter, you? Hey! Gotta no respect. What do you think you do? Why are you looking so sad? It's a not so bad. It's a nicer place. Shut up for your face. That's my mama. Be biggest star, I can see. Shut up. Going to be on down the lane show, buy myself a new car. But still, I be myself. I never change a thing. Always love to dance and sing. Think about the mama, she's the same. What's the matter, you? Hey! Gotta go to bed. What do you think you do? Why are you looking so sad? It's a not so bad. It's, It's a, a nice, nice place, place. Joseph. Shut up for your face. That's a mom. One more time, mama. What's the matter, you? Hey, gotta no respect. What do you think you're doing? And why are you looking so sad? It's a not so bad. It's a nice place. I shut up your face. Hey, the pepperoni, what's that? What's the way? Grazie, everyone. Welcome. Glad to be on the Don Lane Show. Now what? Big improvisational section. Make it up as you go along. But big hit song. Thank you for buying my record. But we got a real special treat for you now. Don and me, we're going to sing this song for you. But you already know it, so but he's going to help under the black button. Okay? Now I sing, what's the matter to you? You all sing, hey! Right? Very good. Then we do the rest, and everyone sing, shut up your face. Or fight! Hey! What's the matter to you? Hey! God, I know. This is my own applause, just in case the audience didn't come. Let me hear it again. Play it again. In case the audience didn't show. <laughs> Man carries around his own applause. How did this uh, Giuseppe character originate uh, with you? What character? <laughs> yeah. You mean how did Joe Dolce oh, character oh, originate? Yes. Right. I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll talk to you as Giuseppe. Giuseppe, how long have you been in Australia? Oh, one and maybe two years. Mm -hmm. well, last I remember. I came here, uh, married in Australia, and then I come here and I uh, had a hard time getting a job because of my accent. So I um, got into management, and I manage a couple of acts. I manage. <laughs> I do. I'm a manager. I get 15%. And wait a minute. Wait a minute. Managers are only supposed to get 10%. Well, uh, I know, but I'm a good manager. I got <laughs> <laughs> But I accidentally got hit the song, too, so I get 100% of that. That's right. Yeah. Which, which, who are the other acts? There's a, there's a Texas act. Under act is Big Joe Texas. And then the serious uh, songwriter Joe Dolce. <laughs> <laughs> And any others? Is that it? No more? Uh, one more. I got, the, I got the girl in the show now, a real pretty girl, so a great voice. Her name is Lynn Van Heck. Let's have a big round. Wait, it's broke. Lynn. Was it working this morning? So. Yeah. <laughs> well, do you have uh, do you have big offices, or, uh, plush offices, or do you just uh, you know? What the, where do I do my business from? Yeah. Yeah, from my car. I got a real big uh, <laughs> dashboard. 
I got the dash, but I took off the dog. See, I had a dog in the back that went like that. Right. But uh, I thought if I took the dog off, I could put the papers and the pencils, and then I could work from my back seat. So it works That's out. cool. All right. Well, you got someplace. And also, you can move the business wherever you want. If you don't like a neighborhood, you can get out and go somewhere else. That's right. Yeah. Like I got the park in the back of the, the Don Lane show. Right? Oh, you're Don Lane. Hi, glad to meet you. How do you do? Yes, Sorry very about nice that. to meet you. Yes, sir. Forget where I am. You, have you done much television? Uh, uh, well, I got to this television. I've done this one. This is really great. See this? <laughs> this is called Plant the Television for Giuseppe Week. Why don't you take a hammer, go push in that, and put the plant in real nice. You've got to put the water in the fertilizer. Yeah. <laughs> Big That's round nice. of applause for the television. <laughs> Did you expect that this record was going to get you to the top of the charts? I mean, you've even been on Countdown. Uh, yes, it's uh, been expected that I would get it there. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. I want to give Don Lane the birthday present. It's what, is that? what is it? I didn't it? get enough paper to wrap this part, but on the camera, don't show that, okay? This is for you, Don. Happy Should birthday. I pretend to open it up now? Yeah, you can open it. It's a real sure. special present. Okay. This is from you to me. Yeah, I hope it's the right size. It doesn't tick or anything. It doesn't... Not no. yet. Not yet. <laughs> what does it say? Shut up, you... <laughs> <laughs> Howdy! It's my great pleasure to introduce to you my favorite chef and your favorite chef, ladies and gentlemen. Martha Gardner. No, uh, <laughs> Peter Russell Clark. Hello, Peter. Uh, good to see you, mate. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> there he is. She's, I must just tell you, that Martha Gardner, she's very good. Yes, she Martha was. Gardner. She knows all about everything. And so do you, so far as cooking's concerned. You've got out now. Not too good when I dribble it down the front of me yet. Whatever that's when, called there. When you dribble anything down, Peter, it's the highest quality food of it. Look, Thank you. Peter Russell Thank Clark's you. New Idea Cookbook. What exactly is it, Peter? Uh, a cookbook, mate. Yeah. And, uh, I, no, I decided that I should... Uh, I decided that I should... I just wanted to show that. It reminds me of a mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> Crawled out from the sheets. The, uh, uh, I decided that I needed to bring out a book that had more than just eggs and cheese and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I've done with this. But I must just tell you, I met a lady today and said, why have you called it New Idea? Yeah. Why is it the New Idea cookbook? Well, I write for New Idea. And I said, and it's got tons of new ideas in it. Mm -hmm. And she said, rubbish, love. No, no new ideas in cooking. And I said, yeah, full of it. What'd you she say? Said, oh, I said, well... Shut actually, up in your face. <laughs> I said, what you do is you get a thing like that, yeah. colour page, yeah. you tear that out, yeah. drop it in a saucepan of hot water, boil it for about 35 <laughs> minutes, and it's edible. And she said, is and that she true? Fell, she fell for it. She, she said, oh, I'll have one of those. Yeah. So she bought a couple and away she went. Patty said she saw you. Listen, <laughs> let, me, let me ask you, Peter. Uh, okay, with the recipes and things, are they all your own recipes? No, I pinched, uh, I pinched some, some from uh, Bernard King, Margaret Fulton, and... What about uh, your mum? Yes, I pinched a few from mum. How's your mum going? Mum's, mum's very good. She's a bit cold at the moment. I won't go on with that. <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. She's that's in England. That's, She's is in England. she really? Yeah. Oh, well, we've all got to serve purgatory. There is, uh, there is Peter Russell Clark's New Idea Cookbook, which is available. How much is it worth? Uh, three dollars. Well, it's worth about two dollars ninety-five. It's selling for three dollars ninety-eight. Right. -o. But that's only for the cover. <laughs> that's only for the cover. <laughs> Typically modest Peter Russell Clark. It really is a, a great cookbook. Peter Russell Clark's New Idea Cookbook. Buy it soon and see him soon. He's the best. Thanks, Peter. Thank Um, when Pam Ayers arrived on our show for the first time a few years ago, I was told that she was an English poetess. Now, for some reason, the picture that I had of her was nothing like the lady herself. <laughs> Pam Ayers was just rising to worldwide recognition, and no wonder. She was charming and witty, and her poetry touched a familiar and funny nerve in everyone. Her following now could be classified as worldwide and enormous. She's back in Australia for a series of concerts, and to pay us another visit. This is her third. So, here is our Pam 
The real thing, no farce. The lady who taught us that things come in glass. <laughs> Pam Ayers, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, and hello, everybody. And I'd like to recite this poem, which is called Oh God Built the Duck-Billed Platypus. And it's a poem I wrote after I went to the Hillsville Sanctuary, and uh, I saw my first duck-billed platypus, and I came to the conclusion that he was made from all the bits God had left over when he finished making everybody else. You <laughs> see? It goes, it goes like this. The duck-billed platypus, small aquatic friend, Made from the pieces God had over at the end. According to his reckoning, he'd not been wrong before. He hadn't made enough. He needed one mammal more. So he looked in all the corners of his cupboard, large and bare, a little foot here and a little nose there, a scrap of fur, a feather, nothing anyone would miss. And God said, oh, good God, yes, what can I make out of this? <laughs> There was a funny flat tail and a great enormous beak which had lain in the cupboard for a year and a week. Four webbed feet in the manner of a duck and hanging on the peg a furry overcoat for luck. Well, <laughs> the turn of the platypus came to be fitted. God sat him down and he honestly admitted that the finished platypus might appear a little odd, but look on the bright side of it, said God. You can, sw <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can swim in the river, you can paddle in the creek, you can tackle anybody with a great big beak. There's a... <laughs> There's a tail for a rudder or alternatively legs, and by way of consolation, you got babies and eggs. So, <laughs> so God took all the pieces into workshop one, and there he told the men the kind of thing he wanted done. The carpenter and joiner stroked the platypus's neck and said, don't upset this one, he can't run, but he can peck. So... <laughs> So the platypus was made and his beak was firmly rooted and God found him a home where he would not be persecuted. They packed him up and sent him with his tail neatly furled in a brown paper parcel marked Australia the World. <laughs> How are you? I'm all right, thank you. I brought me Dorothy bag. Your what? Me Dorothy bag. What's that? Dorothy. Oh, it's a bag. Oh, uh, a bag. I, I brought it because I thought if I ran out of steam halfway through the platypus, mm. I could whip out the copy which I had in me Dorothy bag. <laughs> See. In case you forgot it. Yes. You've had your, your hair. This is not the Pam Ayers we knew before. Pam Ayers no. had fringe and hair hanging down. Now you've had this new sophisticated haircut. Is this I've, because had, I've had an air raid. An air raid, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's a long story, see, Don. I went to this man who was alleged to be a barber mm -hmm. for, a, <laughs> for a perm, and it was a catastrophe. Right. Yes, <laughs> it, was, it was, you know, you've seen wire wool. Wire steel, wool, yes, steel wool, yes. Used yes. for cleaning. Yeah. Well, it looked like that, so I had to have it cut off. Well, I think it looks very nice, except you're not yeah. supposed to go to a barber. Women are supposed to go to a hairdresser. Well, I, don't, I wouldn't like to tell you what I really thought he was. Barber will do. <laughs> Barber will do, yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're in the process. Two, two projects. Let me talk about two projects you do. First one is that you have uh, children's books. In the, are you not still nervous? I am. I always get nervous. It's awful, isn't it? You wouldn't think a seasoned performer like me <laughs> <laughs> would suffer, would you? <laughs> no. It's you, Don. That's what it is, really. It's... <laughs> Don't do that to me. I think you're one, I'm one of your biggest fans. Why well, would you? But what about you're doing? So you're doing. You're working on some books with children. 
I understand. I am, you. yes. I've done a children's storybook. How do you relate this to what you should be writing for children? Uh, do you think well, of yourself as a child? or? No, I don't ever try and write for somebody. I don't think this will appeal to children aged 11 to 13. I just write it for myself, really, mm. and hope for the best. Yes, well, that, <laughs> yes. that's a sensible way to do it. Are you, are, you, are you planning on having any children of your own, by the way? Oh, yes. You are? A new side for Australian rules. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> Is there a fella in the, uh, on the horizon? Uh, no, slight problem. There isn't, no. There isn't. <laughs> it never seems to stop anyone else nowadays. No. Uh, no. But, uh, but um, I'm looking hard. You are? Yeah. Do you, uh, do you look at, at fellas with a perspective eye? Do you think no, that, I don't really. No, don't. I, that was a joke. No, I don't really. No, I'm not gripped. <laughs> yeah. Gripped by the problem, no. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> I talked myself into a verbal cul-de-sac there, Don. Yes. Uh, <laughs> a verbal cul-de-sac. Oh, that's so wonderful. Yeah. Now, what about, and what about your house now? You have a new home. I have. Well, I've, yes, I've got myself a cottage by the sea. Have you I've... always wanted a cottage by the sea? Yes. 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 So is this I've a got... different cottage, or is it like any of your other run-of-the-mill cottages that you might pick out? Say, that is a typical cottage by the sea. Well, it's got a pigsty. <laughs> <laughs> Where is it, this cottage by the sea? It's, by, it's near a place called Douglas. Mm, which is near where, that I know? Well, nowhere, really. It sort no. of stands yeah. on its own. Does it? Yes. So I've got a house in Oxfordshire. I've got a very nice cottage in Oxfordshire. And I'm very fortunate because I've also bought this retreat where I can go and write me wonderful works by the sea. Well, that's, that's, I think that's, that's very nice. And you, you're decorating it yourself? Uh? No, I got Billy Beach, the painter, in to do it. <laughs> Billy Beach, is he a decorator, a famous interior decorator? No, he comes in and slaps the distemper on. He's got a, a bucket of distemper and a stirrup pump. <laughs> <laughs> Am I missing something? What the hell is a bucket of distemper? <laughs> Sorry, Doc. It's, it's that old powdery cheap paint you used to use it when the war was on. When you couldn't afford proper paint that set hard, you used to have distemper and it came in a packet or a box. Yes. And you slopped it around with water <laughs> and then slapped it on the wall and it all used to come <laughs> off. And if you brush past it, you got covered in it. Let me tell people, Stem November the 20th, you're going to be in Launceston, the 22nd in Hobart, the 23rd here in Melbourne at the Dallas Brooks Hall, mm. November 23rd. November 25th, the Opera House oh, in yes, Sydney. Oh, yes, yes. You certainly have cracked a big time oh, here. I'm so pleased about that. It's, I I've am impressed too. all my friends. Has know? it? Yes. That's <laughs> lovely. December the 10th, the Festival Theatre in Adelaide. Where did you see that? That's I've beautiful. I've seen it. Have you? I've seen it. Nice. It's lovely. It's red and brown. And December the 15th, you're playing in Perth. 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 Yes. With For two all Fs. Yeah. <laughs> so, someone told me that you had. Um, written a, a birthday poem. I have. I have. It's in me Dorothy back. Just a <laughs> yes. And, and many other returns. Why is it called a Dorothy bag? <laughs> I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> well, Was Dorothy always had one. Dorothy always yes. had one. This is it, then, and I'd like to wish you a very happy birthday. You, you, you may any time you want. Yeah, really. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> here it is, then. Which camera shall I look at? You choose one. There are that three one. here. Oh, yes. I'll look at that one. That Take the one by the sea. Oh, yes. Here it is, then. Um, this is my ultimate accolade. Ultimate so, accolade. Yes. I'll translate. Yeah, go ahead. There's something about a birthday that fills your heart with song, with sweet anticipation when the postman comes along. Oh, the twittering of the nightingale. <laughs> <laughs> don't get lines like that in anybody else's poems. No. Oh, the twittering of the nightingale, the sunshine and the rain, and the nicest birthday of them all is 21 again. <laughs> oh, when I heard it was his birthday, without no doubt or fear, oh, I flew out to Australia, for Don Lane is my hero. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't got a present, no fancy watch or knife, but here's my private number, in case you'd like a wife.
Well, we're sort of having a really lovely and relaxed time here tonight, and uh, it, by way of celebration of uh, the last show and my birthday, and it just wouldn't be a party without the suave and sophisticated Bernard King of the Kitchen uh, being the last show, pre-Christmas and all of that, the pre-Christmas celebrations all rolled into one. Bernard has promised me something special, so why don't we see what it is. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Bernard King here. With all due respect, Bernard, if, if you, as Santa Claus, came down my chimney, I'd worry a little. <laughs> I might stay. <laughs> well, this is... You want to borrow the hat? No, thank you. No, thank you. Can we, we'll put it over here safely. Would you like us to keep it? <laughs> no, we'll just try it on the counter here. Okay. Uh, the season of the year. I'm planning something for you tonight yes. that will absolutely eclipse every maitre d' you ever had to tolerate in your life. Right. You've taken the lady out, you're seated in the restaurant, and he upstages you for the entire evening. The moment she asks for a special dessert, in he comes, madame, and does the number, you see. And then you are thinking, whatever happened to my machismo? All of a sudden, she's going to him. Oh, isn't he divine? Isn't he gorgeous? Mm. Here's your chance. Right. Straubs. Yeah. Crepes. A Suzette. Just in case you're having a party, we did happen to discover a little ham. Oh, lovely. And we yes. did discover a little gateau. But we might light the candle to that as we go along. Right. Okay. Now, here you are in the privacy of your own home. Mm -hmm. Comes the moment for that luscious dessert, and this is especially luscious. Warm pan, just around about there. Pat of butter. This has no nonsense to it whatsoever. This is the epitome of simplicity. <laughs> Straws. You always talk like you're making love to your food. Oh, but that's what we do, isn't it? Good. Oh, oh. Now, the purpose is not to cook the strawberries at all just to warm them through. By this time, the maitre d' would have squeezed lemon, he'd have brown sugar, he'd have squeezed orange, he'd have taken 55 liqueurs with extreme unction and right. splashed yes. them aboard, <laughs> but not you. Right. You are going to then reach for a little old-fashioned thing that everybody who's anybody knows, a touch of Grand Marnier. Not... <laughs> They're complaining already? No, 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 no. Just mm -hmm. I want to see these strawberries get up and walk out. <laughs> <laughs> they will. And then for that, that air of glamour. Oh, you're going to do this. I love this. When they do this in restaurants, it's my favorite thing. As soon as we have the alcohol, they, uh... Now, that's her opportunity to step forward to you and say, Oh, Don, my dress is on fire. No, <laughs> especially with the synthetic. <laughs> Sorry, did I play it? <laughs> oh, no, I didn't. Oh, well, she's going to say, Don. <laughs> yes. I'm wearing a fire force at Major's wig and it's just caught a light. <laughs> yes, right, yes, and it is slowly gluing itself to my scalp. <laughs> or, or she's wearing one of those lovely fluffy Ostie dresses, you know, yes. cut low here with all the fluff and feather here, and suddenly it's, it's gripped to the skin and you have to go to the plastic surgeon for the right, wig yes, instead. Right, yes. Now, at this yeah. point, we can turn you, I often wonder, why do you light the, uh, the, uh, the, the brandy? And, uh... We're burning off the alcohol just in case she's a non-drinker. Right. So this is a... <laughs> God knows what she would do if she were a drinker. Yes. This, <laughs> She'd be a this, fire eater, right? There. This is a confection designed really for people like yourself who are excited about the good taste but not really enthusiastic about the results of alcohol. Hmm. That's the only serious note this program shall have this evening. Yes, right. <laughs> this is the perfect opportunity to do a quick depilatory if you feel the need, you know? That, right, yes. You can do so that kind of thing. Some of the hairs are Now, yes, at right. that moment there, as right. soon as the flame starts to die down, a little splash of cream there we are. Now, obviously, I've cooked enough here because I did detect a slight groan of hunger from your crew as I walked through. Yes. The moment yes. we brought either that, either that or passion. Depends what's going on back there. Well, in some cases, I'm pleased to say, for me, it was passion. I'm delighted yes. about that. And I plan to join heartily with them all. Yes. So there's, now, just swimming with a little cream, the Grand Marnier. Now, that's the total job done in one single stroke. Now, the crepes, any sensible bachelor, has another girlfriend who makes the crepes if she's an expert can you freeze those crepes? oh yes yes yes, yes. or you can buy them in a plastic bag at a supermarket you know right well that. that's but, good that's just as good by the time i've done what i do to them yeah <laughs> god you know. i think if you really if you're sitting there with a girl and you set fire to the strawberries that'd be enough she'd think it was wonderful you just you say oh look at that yes course, you see. I think that's fantastic. see how simple it is can i borrow your dinner oh. suit <laughs> Well, I, I shall speak to my designer about it. I'm sure that even he could create something for a frame like yours. Well, a lot more fabric will be necessary. What do you get for Bernard of Marubra? <laughs> Marubra! <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I don't think there's anyone at Marubra. They well, might be watching, but there's no one there who dresses at all. There we are. So this is the kiwi fruit that the uh, Carl oh, Leachman was talking just about. Just a little token garnish there. Right. Now, the, the, purely because they're very rich in proteins and vitamins. You're going to set fire to that again? Not to that, no, oh. just to this, because this is your birthday. Well, oh, hang on, wait a minute. Before you do that, I want to introduce you my, my official taster for the evening. I have an official taster. You're like a pharaoh. Yes, I have See an official taster. See how carefully taster. I said it. it he's, he, he sets things alight, but he does it more on the cricket pitch. Would you please welcome on one of us on the cricket pitch? One of us. What are you trying to do? Mix the cook with an athlete? Oh, he's fantastic, this guy. <laughs> a great taster, too. One of the greatest uh, cricketers in the country. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Dennis Lilly. Yeah. <laughs> Let me, let me hold on to this before. Do you know Bernard King? We, we met in the dressing yes, room. Yes, Who, in whose dressing room? <laughs> <laughs> he was checking his wickets ready for the game with him. <laughs> oh, that's a bit Don't no tell ball. me that's a plastic bat. Aluminium, Bernard, you should know that. I thought, oh, that's uh, what they were talking about. They said, well, I thought, uh, oh, yeah. you know, being an American, you probably wouldn't know much about cricket, so I thought I'd bring a bat. And I've also bought a uh, strip film on how to play cricket for you. Is so, that right? You're a right. A strip film on how, how to, to play, play cricket, cricket with Dennis Lilly, Rod Marsh, and Bruce Laird. Written in a, oh, it's a film, isn't it? Excuse wonderful? me, I'll read the small print. Yes? <laughs> it's definitely a strip film. I think this is a, <laughs> an R certificate cricket game you have here. That's like, this is the new gear you're going to be wearing for the year, huh? Well, well, this is season a for cricket. track suit. Yeah. Um, the coloured gear will be similar, uh, but not the same. But this is a track suit, which I think is available for everyone. Anyone I saw right. cricket in that. No, 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 just, no, this, this is just, just a warm the casual suit. gear. They have the new yeah, outfits now that they're wearing that all the countries wear, and I saw it in one of the commercials, and they are quite lovely, really, really nice. Bad enough to play at night game. without losing tradition altogether. Mm. When I'm is sorry, tea man. served? I'm sorry. Not in that. <laughs> <sure>. <laughs> Give him a taste. Oh, I want to see oh, what the yes, taste. Yes, yes, yes. Have a taste. A cricketer. Taste it. I better ask the coach first and I'll have this. Thank God he's travelled. I was going for more. I can only have one, can I? Tasters take small amounts in case they die instantaneously. Do I have to say it's good? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to say anything you can't Magnificent. Play, Can I have son? another one? <laughs> Is it really good? Let me try one. I haven't even... Uh, I'll do my mm. fingers. It's better that way. Of course, your Beautiful. fingers are quite sterile. What's the matter? Aren't I allowed to try anything? It's his food. He can eat it how he likes. Magnificent. Ooh. Oh, I told you. you yes, see. very nice. Why don't I... you serve that instead of tea? <laughs> <laughs> when, does, when does it all start? When does it all kick off? Then? Well, uh, the season has started, but we have a game tomorrow against uh, Victoria. Of cricket? And, of cricket. Yeah. And, uh, it's one eyed, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then uh, the season, the test season, gets underway not long after that. So there's one day internationals and uh, big test cricket. And, and of course, all covered on Channel 9. All on nine. Yeah. What is this? I saw a picture of you. Wait a minute. I saw a picture of him, front page of all the newspapers, with a pop group, with Kiss. Yeah, with Kiss, that's right. Uh, in fact, we came, across with with Kiss on, we came across with Kiss on the flight over. And, uh, he asked for an Ace, autograph, and they said, can we have a picture? <laughs> Ace uh, got done out of a bit of money uh, in a card game with one of the guys. He picked on the uh, luckiest guy in the team and uh, lost a couple of hundred bucks. One of the books from your team. Kiss lost money to your team. Right. Well, they but, can afford then, it. They're 117 then, million a year or something. That's right. He got a bit dirty after that. It was 50 bucks a time, and then he said, let's put it up to 1,000. And now God just... <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Bernard, thank you very much. Happy birthday. I hope I see you in the new year, and have a lovely time. Thank you for the happy birthday greetings. Got a couple of rap prezies, too. Okay, we'll get them. We'll pick Much them up. Much more later. useful than a cricket bat. My thank you yeah, for man. that. I'm going to try to I'll see, if I can, see if I can make this thing work, maybe. <laughs> and I'll have a look at this, too. Cricket's on nine. It's going to be bigger and better than ever. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Dennis, Bernard, Ciao. A pleasure. Happy birthday. Okay, mate. My pleasure. We'll take a break. We'll be back with the beautiful and unpredictable star of Superman 2, Sarah Douglas. Where do you meet this lady? Hang in there. Who chose, who chose that little piece to go in there? <laughs> Rather smart. Let me tell you, I discovered something today. Uh, being uh, born in the same year, in 1933, Superman was born... What's that? Is this for real? Yeah? If this is something that I can't... Can I read it? Yeah. Okay. 
Oh. Is that really from, is it, it's not a gig, it's from them? Yeah. Happy birthday, Don. Sorry we are unable to be with you, but you wouldn't have known us without makeup anyway. Ace, Gene, Paul, and Eric. I just think it's nice that they took the time to send it in. That's from uh, Kiss. Worth bringing it on. <clears throat> Is that really from them, or is it somebody playing a gig? We've got a birthday present for you. Um, hang on, if you guys, if you think this, this is, uh, hang on, I don't know what to say. <laughs> who took, I know who it is, it's Ace and, I know who you are, you can't miss the tongue. That's, <laughs> that's an Ace. I had to really come here because of the money I lost the other day on the plane. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> he told, is that right what Dennis Lilly said, you yeah. lost the money on the plane? Yeah. Sure. How is it, look at the way they're looking at you, I feel the same way. I don't believe this is all going on. Yeah. This is a boot from, uh, you know, one of our past concerts, and uh, we thought we'd give it to you for a birthday. And you've all signed it. You want to try it on? Oh, yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> Wait a minute, does it go to a 12? Well, you Hang can on, it I don't care, I'll do anything. Wait a minute, let me see. Let's yeah. Hang on, just from one side. You know, you, this is hard to believe because we've been trying to see these fellas, and everybody told us that they were busy and we couldn't get it spent. I'm well, look at this, I'm nervous. We're finally home without making <laughs> He doesn't know I'm from the Bronx. Yes, I do. It's yes. the wrong foot. It, oh, is it? <laughs> Wait a minute. Hey, I'm not saying you got me too shook up, but you woke up. How's it been? Good? Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, you were in, you were in Perth. Yeah, we were in Perth for yeah, four, days. four days. Yeah, then. and they oh. tell me it was absolutely good. Is that true what they said? The, I read in the paper they said that the whole upper section of the place emptied out and that you guys, uh, they all came down to the bottom of the stage or something. They it were everywhere. We, could, we couldn't really see too much of the audience, but it was great. Yeah? You've got a great looking audience. Yeah. Give doing. yourselves a hand. I can't over there. I can't get it off. I can't get it off. Can you get it? It's a glass of champagne for you. And, uh, and so, so tell me about, the, where are the other guys? Uh, hiding out or something? Well, oh, Paul, Paul uh, went to New Zealand to see a friend. and. Uh, Eric had a little too much to drink last night. <laughs> actually, Eric is being, actually, Eric is being, uh, he's being held <laughs> ransom yeah. by two of the fans, two of our younger female fans. Being held ransom? Yeah. What's it going to cost you to get a bank? Well, we've got to find out when we get back to the hotel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who invented that tongue business? I think, it? well, the doctor. When I was born, he pulled me out by the wrong appendix. <laughs> What part of the Bronx did you grow up in? Uh, Kingsbridge Road. King? Oh, Jesus Christ. That's not no, 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 I wasn't. He was at the church around the corner, right? Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Park. I grew up on, uh, right off Bedford Park Boulevard. I used to play basketball over there. Dewey Clinton High School? That's where I went. He went to that high school. I don't believe it. I went to the same high school. What's he doing? He's doing a thing here with ladies. I had a feeling you'd go to Dewey Clinton, because everybody went to Dewey Clinton. That's right. He's fantastic. Look at this. He's doing a whole number here. Right? All right, steal the show. Go ahead. Gene. Go ahead, steal the show. Go you ahead. can collect it. You can collect it. If, if you know that, you can, you can collect the phone number if you want. You can do a no, we were just say hello. We were just comparing. Uh, yes, <laughs> appendages, as appendages. you said. <laughs> Is that, he and I went to, the, went to the same high school. We went to the same high school. Really? Aren't you delighted with that? Is that Robert Klein like went there? Congratulations. 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 <laughs> happy birthday again. How, Thank you very how much. old are you today? 47. 47. No, you're not. 47. And Girls, I he's not 47, is he? Is no. He 47? <laughs> 47 and I am 37. I can't believe it. These audiences react to everything. They are in a state of shock at the moment. They're just looking at you. You see, you don't believe maybe that it's not really them. You think it's a gag or something. But I'm telling you, you can't. That's there's only one of those. Show them that. Never mind. I'll tell you. I don't know about that. 
<laughs> anyway, listen, you guys, I can't. That's a lovely birthday present, and I thank you for coming yeah. in. A pleasure. Thank you. We've been I hope the rest, of the, the rest of the tour is fantastic for you. Thank you have a you. great time, okay? Thanks you very much. Right, it's Saturday night. You know, no, I'm going back tomorrow morning. Oh, I'm you, you New don't York. Be able to yeah, go. Yeah, maybe I'll see you somewhere without your makeup. Yeah, I'm going to LA and then New York. Well, how will you know? I don't know. I'll figure out a way. I'll do something. Happy birthday. Thank you very much. Terrific. How's that? I thought for a minute it was Bert or something, you know? <laughs> how did you, how, have you known about this at all? What did it just happen? Oh, I'm, this boot is going up on my, look, I got a cricket bat from Dennis Lilly and this boot. <laughs> I got the boot from Kiss. <laughs> which is, well, the, which was all right because earlier in the week we got the A. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, that's, if the other boys are watching, uh, thank them for me, will you? That's fantastic that they came in to see us. Mike, huh? They're, when are they here? They're here tomorrow night. Huh? Tomorrow night, they're down here in Melbourne, and they're on the Australian tour, and I understand it's been a knockout. I read some of the reviews in the papers. Uh, there was one in the Australian the other day that just ranted on and raved on and said that uh, a lot of people expected there was just going to be a lot of noise, and evidently it's not. They say it's a fantastic rock and roll show and a great spectacle as well. Um, that's just wonderful. If Patty Marston's watching, thank you. She's the person that handles all the publicity and manages all this stuff on the road and uh, I know she must have been responsible somewhere along the way for that so I thank you also Patty. Uh, thank Gene and Ace for coming in. Will you? <laughs> he looks so bloody big. I mean I thought I was tall and his hair and tongue came at me. You know? A hairy, I've never been attacked by a hairy tongue. That's not, oh, sorry. <laughs> we have to do this. In 1933, I can't believe that happened. <laughs> in 1933, ah, the hell with it. We're going to the wheel. No, wait a minute. In 1933, Superman was born in an article in an amateur science fiction magazine. And from what started as a pencil drawing grew into a giant motion picture. And following on the heels of the first Superman movie comes the continuing adventure of the superheroes fight against evil in Superman 2. Now he finds himself up against three villains from the planet Krypton who have powers equally as strong <clears throat> as his own. <clears throat> one of those villains is with us tonight. She's also one of, your, one of the zaniest ladies that I've met in a long time. She's um, uh, Sarah Douglas and Sarah plays the wicked and wanton Ursa in the film Superman 2. She is one of the up and coming and, uh, and tabbed to be big stars coming out of England. And uh, we'll show you a little bit of uh, what she does in Superman 2. In this clip, she meets up with an Earth person who is traveling in space. And she sets out to put him in his place here from Superman 2. Make this lady feel welcome. With you, she's very unpredictable. I think we'll have a terrific time with her. Here's Sarah Douglas. Say hello. <laughs> I don't know. That's don't just know. The, the biggest surprise to me, you know, because a, a oh. very un. Um, What's the word you're looking for? It's, it's not easy to get access to Kiss. Let I me know. put it that it's way. Yeah. I was standing back there and I was frightened. I'm not supposed to be frightened of men. That, went, yeah. oh, wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> That's true. Tell me about uh, this part in Superman 2. Now, how does Sarah Douglas end up in uh, Superman 2? Uh, well, Sarah Douglas got shot off in a, into outer space in Superman 1. Mm. In, uh, in that record cover. In case people don't remember, it was the, it was the, in the very beginning of the In the very beginning, the um, Marlon Brando, that played Jor he played jor uh, that's Superman's dad, yeah. sent us off to outer space. I was sent because I was a naughty, wicked lady and 
consumed with a total hatred of the male sex, and I did terrible things. So I got sent into, into outer space in a record cover. Well, it's not a record cover, but that's what it looked like. Right. And um, in part two, it shatters, and I escape from outer space, mm. come back to Earth to revenge my imprisonment. And because I come from Krypton, I have all the powers of Superman. Right. So I have X-ray eyes, and I'm, uh, <laughs> I can fly, which is the most important thing, and I have super breath. Yeah. And then I just um, have super everything. They tell me that the flying was an important part of getting this role. Uh, that yes, yes. I mean, it I was mean, not that you had to fly, but I mean, you had to be able to handle the flying. And oh, all. I had to fly. Yes, no, that's true. No, yeah. it was true. It? No, we actually, yeah, it was because, in fact, the height that we're working at was, um, I mean, a lot of actresses were going in and testing for the part, and getting up on those wires and getting up very high were actually sort of losing their cool completely, you know, and panicking and floundering about. Mm. But uh, I, mean, I got lots of practice before I actually got the, the test. I practiced on my kitchen stool, you know, lying over my stool with my arms out, you know, practicing holding my legs up and holding my arms out and looking good. Um, and I, when, I got, um, when I got to doing the test, it was, a part of a, it was an integral part of it, just to see if I could do it. So mm. I jumped off and you don't want me to tell that story again, do you? A lot of competition. Yeah, I was, well, I mean, they were scraping the barrel, I think, because they'd seen about 600 people by the time they got to me. Or so they tell me. Maybe they were just saying that. Hmm. And uh, it was down to myself and another girl at, at the very, very end. And um, I, they said, right, they wanted me to, to, to do this flying test. And she went in before me. And I, I've never met this lady. I don't know who it is. But it was just the two of us. And uh, she went in and did her stuff. And then I went in. And I got my leotard on and my little plimsolls on. And I was all dressed up with my hair scraped back, hmm. all ready to fly. And um, I got up on the wires and jumped off and flew. And one of the crew down below looked up at me and he shouted, you got no chance, darling. He says, the last bird flew without any knickers on. And the, <laughs> the actress, the actress, oh, an afterthought, uh, the, the actress had actually, uh, yeah, it seemed to have got up there, if it's true, and uh, in her little whatever, without any knickers on, and everybody was going, wow, as she flew overhead. Yeah. But I got the part, so... Hmm. Hmm. And she kept her part. Yeah. She, the, uh, uh, I don't know. Wait, yeah. Nobody knows. Don't know. We won't go into that. Marlon Brando. Uh, they tell yeah. me that um, he's supposed to be a fairly difficult man to approach and get along with, but evidently you got along with him beautifully. Yeah. Well, he, you know, he has corridors painted in front of him for a start. So I mean, he came into the movie very happy. I mean, they treated him extremely well. He was well aware that they paint corridors. We were all very happy because we got free lunches for the first week that he was working, all the actors were given free lunches, so we all went around smiling, everybody was very happy. Mm. So Marlon, um, right from the beginning, was very content, getting paid an awful lot of money, and um, yeah, I got on with him very well. At, at, after about five days, he finally actually sat me on his lap, and I was rigid as a board, I mean, I was terrified. And he said, you know, I was like everybody else, that, you know, he's actually a very human person, and he wants to be treated like a... No, he is. He's a very <laughs> nice guy, and it's people like me that are, you know, I mean, I was trying to be friendly, and I was terrified of You're him. You were in awe of him, actually. Yeah, I mean, he's a superstar, yeah. you know? You know, he was wonderful, absolutely divine. I mean, he did, you, 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 I saw, for instance, we have something, I expect people probably know about this, where we have our chairs with the names on, and um, when we leave our chair and we go off to do our little bit on a set, we come back, and somebody inevitably is sitting in our chair. So you approach all the chairs, and everybody jumps up and sees... See if it's got your name on, and if it has, they disappear off. And I saw um, Brando coming over one day, and he noticed that somebody was sitting in his chair. And instead of actually going through that horror of everybody leaping up and this man being embarrassed because he was sitting in Brando's chair, Brando just sort of went off into the corner and sat very quietly on a little tin can. And oh, he's a nice guy. He's a mm. nice guy. A nice guy. A nice yeah, guy. he was all right. No, he was great. He was acting, great. Uh, acting would would have been instilled in you from a very early age. You were born in Stratford on Avon. I have mm -hmm. never met anyone from Stratford on Avon. Why are no. you speaking like that? Much less born there. Yes. I don't know what no. I speak. No, like? yes, you were because you're saying Stratford on Avon. Everybody imagines that we've all got this sort of wonderful classical training. I've done no theatre at all. I come from Stratford. Yeah, um, I lived in the shadow of the theatre. Yeah. It's true. Uh, yeah, it, I suppose it started certainly started the ball rolling for me. I mean, I got an interest in the theatre. And then I went off and did my National Youth Theatre, which is uh, something in England that is a great institution. And then I went to drama school. But you love acting. Yeah. It's, well, a, I mean, job. A, it's a job. It's a job, isn't it? Yeah, but a lot I mean, of people yes. are doing jobs that they don't like, you know. Yeah. So, uh, no, I, well, it's better than working for a living. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is, what is uh, Miss St. Bruno? Oh, God. I, I don't even I know the answer to this. I saw it. You don't know the answer to it. This is, keeps coming up. This is a... I'm getting... 
This is a tobacco commercial I did a long while, oh, well, about two years I ago. I thought maybe it was a beauty contest or something, I and you were missing. No, I'm too clumsy. Drop the lot, Douglas. I'm no nurse. Oh, I mean <laughs> for no ulterior motive, just because I spill my food. I could no more do that. Uh, no, I couldn't do a beauty contest. And uh, and before your acting career really started for yourself, you worked as a governess as well. Uh, yeah, I did. I did my uh, my turn as we do often in England. I was sent off to teach French to little. No, I I was supposed to teach English to French children and. I was supposed to learn French from them. I mean, we actually never did anything because neither of us could speak the other language. It wasn't a very, it wasn't a very successful period of my life. Um, and then I came back and worked in a canning factory, and then I went into the sterilizing department of a hospital. My mother was determined I should have all sorts of different jobs before I went into acting. Well, sterilization is very important if you're going to be an actress. And canning. Yes, and canning, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, Superman 2 opens here. Has it opened? Uh, it opens in, I think, in December. I very December the 4th or something like that. Yes, and yes, you'll be going around, all around Australia. Where do you go next? Uh, um, you know. Where are we today? Melbourne. We're in Melbourne. Yes. Well, I was in Sydney this morning, Melbourne. I think I'm going to Ad I'm going back to Sydney and then Adelaide. Adelaide? Oh. Yes. Perth. Yes. And then South Africa. And I'm flying around the world, as they say. Oh, Backwards. That's, that's lovely. Oh, here it is. Superman 2 starts in Australia and all states December the 4th at the Village Theatre. That's Theaters. what I said. You got it right. Too. Thank God for that. Thank you, Sarah. Thank Sarah you Douglas, ladies and gentlemen. We will be back. No, we won't. Thank you very much, Sarah. Okay, yes. Is, uh, is Tim there? Yes. All right. Just, uh, before you go any further, uh, this is we... Tim Evans, my writer, and our resident comic, <laughs> and everything else. So we got it. Just a uh, couple, couple of telegrams just came in. I thought I'd, I'd come out and get them out of the way. This isn't uh, like this other one with the guys. No, no. Them. These, these little gentlemen. Uh, this one just arrived uh, from your mom. Yeah. Says happy birthday, Donald. But please stop telling everyone you're 47 because I tell everyone I'm 50. <laughs> That'd be our, yes, it, right. Here's another one. Happy birthday, Don. Please feel free to join me after the show for a convivial glass of prune juice, Sir Eric Pierce. That's a good one. Yes. Well, yeah. happy birthday and many thanks for your generous support over the years, the Australian manufacturers of vitamin E. Well, yes, right. <laughs> here's one from your doctor. Happy birthday and thank you for willing your body to medical science. P.S. When can we pick it up? <laughs> well, okay, throw that one in. Another one, moving along quickly. Happy birthday and warmest regards from myself, Al Jolson, W.C. Fields, and Clark Gable. Signed, Doris Stokes. Yes, that's right. Well, <laughs> and we have another one here. Dearest Don, happy birthday from the three of us. Dolly Parton. Oh, uh, that's nice, yes. <laughs> Happy birthday, Don. Congratulations on your great performances in 1980. Hope you can keep it up in 1981. Oh, that's very nice. Who's that from? Your girlfriend. <laughs> uh, we also have a, a card just arrived. Uh, Don Lane from James Randi. Uh, this just came in, and it does say, uh, I, I gotta admit, I had a lot of trouble making out his handwriting. It's not very clear. Dear Don, uh, ha happy birthday. Enclosed is an, oh, airline ticket. Now you can something off. I can't make out that word. What you said there. Yes, right. Yes. yes. Well, it was one there. Yes. And we do have a couple of gifts here just moving along quickly. Yes. While we've got them in a run. Uh, on behalf of your writers. Here we uh, come up with these great ideas yes. on all these closing shows. They Don't they work well? Zap on along. <laughs> as long as you keep them going. On behalf of your writers, uh, Mike McCall Jones and myself, we figured over the holidays you would have a lot of time and you might like to do some reading. So everything we've written for you over the whole year, we have put in the book for him and we would like you to have this. There you are. It's a and dictionary. Well, all the words are in there. You just got to put them together. We can't. Oh. <laughs> now, see, we got them going now. It's took a little time. Yes, we got them. Right. Got it, yes. And uh, furthermore, we had your dog Shadow, uh, since it was your birthday, brought in your slippers. I should explain that Don owns a rather large German Shepherd. Mm -hmm. And uh, he did bring the slippers in, but we had a little trouble getting them off him. But uh, oh, there's the slippers for yes. you. And on behalf of the crew, Shit. Shit. And he was holding on, was he? <laughs> he yes. hang on them. But yes. on behalf of everyone who's worked for you for the whole year, and we know you, the way you work, and uh, something yes. special from everyone who's been involved with you. Max, could you bring that in for us, please? Uh, a special presentation to you. This is from everybody who's worked with you for the whole year. There you are. Like that? 
I'm almost afraid to ask. I don't... Well, what, what is it? That is a 12-foot pole, because you're always saying you wouldn't touch something with a 10-foot pole. Oh. So there it is. <laughs> Put it on, put it back with the wheel. You're all hot. You know that? I'm Don's Wheel tonight. You could win this exciting new Toyota Corolla CS manual sedan valued at around $6,430 on the road. Your new Toyota comes to you with the compliments of Pit Stop Motors of South Yarris and Kilder and Dolstonwick, one of Australia's leading Toyota dealers. And Pit Stop Motors want your business. And from Danish Deluxe, the delightful Reckler Lounge Suite, covered in the natural look and feel of real leather from Howe & Company, valued at around $1,800. Danish Deluxe in leather is a delight to earn. And an exquisite diamond pendant to the value of $1,000 from the superb diamond collection at Theodore Fine Jewelry, renowned for the most beautiful jewelry in Melbourne, maybe the world. And from Hooper comes the fabulous package, valued at around $1,000, comprising the remarkable 465 front-loading washing machine with matching hotshot dryer, plus the Concept One self-propelled cleaning system. And it's the wheel. What happens now? He should be here any moment now. Do I have to wait long? No, 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 I said at the party, no, 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 I, I want to, do they, do you know, I don't think they know who this is, don't you remember, Gina, <laughs> don't you remember, those wonderful days those in Hawaii, days in Hawaii. Hawaii. <laughs> what's that Hawaii, oh, hold on, listen, have that, a hear. what's that Hawaii, <laughs> uh, let me see, what does it say, hey, yes, I think it's what, most, uh, most guys get a, uh, um, a, it's going to be more fun when you go down the slippery dip to get yeah. the letter. <laughs> I hadn't thought about it. Yeah. Uh, 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 Shut up, you fast. <laughs> Would you like? Uh, Happy birthday, no, no, Bob. Like <laughs> what is your name? Uh, huh? what do, we, do you have a name, a drag name? Oh, Bertha. Bertha. <laughs> is it Bertha? Don't you have one? This is very nice. Is this a... Uh... <laughs> Don't you have one? I think I have one. I had one the last time I looked. You've met Donna? Don't do that. <laughs> have you, are you coming to the party like this? Uh... Of course. Why well, do you ask me to come? <laughs> That's your partner. <laughs> I think they're more shocked over this than they are. <laughs> Will they really kiss, by the way? Yes. Really? Yes. I thought that was me. <laughs> <laughs> it looked pretty close to the same. Can you do that with your tongue, what they did? Sure. No. no, I can't. You know that? <laughs> Why do you ask? Uh, I don't know. Do you have anything in mind? No. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, I don't know how women do this. Have a look at this. See? Well, they shave them for a start. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to meet our would you like to meet our first contestant? Yeah, yes, just, certainly. Just one kiss for you You've always wanted to do that, didn't you? You've always wanted to have enough hair that you could go. go oh, like, no, no, I no, thought no. you meant get dressed like no, this. No, no. Only at weekends. <laughs> Listen, our uh, you remember, don't you? No. Our, don't you remember how you got the show? No. Our, <laughs> our first contestant, Don, is uh, is June Marshall. <laughs> Girls, how do you wear these rotten things? I've got <laughs> Look at that. This actually belongs to one of the ballet girls. <laughs> 
Would you, uh... Oh, sorry. Sorry. That's not <laughs> revolting, I beg your pardon. Uh, please don't call through. I know it's revolting. I beg your pardon. I've got a lamp here, port and everything now. Just, let, me, let me just lift it up in the front. Of you. OK, there you go. That's unusual for That's... you, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, wait, just put... Just one kiss no, to your... No, don't! There you go. Put, right. the, put the shoulder strap up. OK, right. There. And, just, and just lift it for yourself. Don! What? That's... You fool, that starts... Yeah. I'd like right. to meet our first contestant, Don. Yes. It's June Marshall, who's a, a Libra. <laughs> You're going to go home like And this. she... Yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Patty's got a cousin down from the country. Yes. And she's going to introduce me as a cousin from the city. We'll have a lot of fun. For what reason? Oh, well, you get your kicks and we'll get out. <laughs> our first... <laughs> it is I think. Our first contestant is, uh, is June Marshall of Lawson Street in Elwood. Hello, June. Hello, June. How are you? Nice to meet you. How are you doing? You know, you know, you know Bert, don't you? I think so. You think so? Yes. Sure. Yeah, I was just praying that our first contestant wouldn't come out of the same frock. <laughs> <laughs> but you look absolutely beautiful. Oh, you I know exactly what you're going through. <laughs> June, you're a Libra, aren't you? Let me tell you about you. Yeah. You've been feeling a little bit tired and tense lately, haven't you? I'd like to see somebody just tune into the Have you not? Yeah, and you've had a pretty busy social time. Oh yes. Which is coming up. Things will improve. Feel free to invest in a lottery ticket because there's a win for you. OK? Mm -hmm. You are to marry. Are you married already? Well, I've got some great news here for your husband. There's going to be another bloke in your life. <laughs> you are going to meet a fair-haired man who's going to be very, very important for you. So good luck to her. I hope you can work it out. All right, my love, which number do you want to start on? Four, please. Number four. OK. Fred will fix up here at number four. Right. Now, what is it, the sign? Libra. Libra. Libra, yeah. Well, oh, look at that. It's practically on it. That might be a good, good sign. Luck, June. Listen, I hope you win the car because you'd have to wait eight weeks to get it. <laughs> Give it a big spin. Down that one. Good luck. Here we go. Big one. That's it. Hey, hey. Hey. Shut up your face. Shut up your face. Number four, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, number four. You gotta give it a big spin. Yeah. You know, you start, start up here, sir. Can you reach up there? Yeah. Right. Big, that's it. It's not going all Max! The way. All the way around. Oh. Max! Max! Get out here! There's something wrong with the wheel. Max! No? Perhaps one, try it once more, June. One really big spin, as, as hard as you possibly can. There you go. Max, <laughs> loosen up the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. He's an expert at this, listening nuts. Where the fellas <laughs> Why, why was it tightened up, Max? Wasn't it the weather, my dear? It's the weather, my dear. <laughs> it's the weather, my I'm, dear. I'm wearing the drag and he says, my dear. <laughs> now give it a bang. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's oh, lovely. Oh, now you're talking. That'll go all bloody oh, right. right now. OK, right. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, here for Max. Down that way. Oh, there's the right people. There we go. Yeah. inside the thing and it fell back by itself nobody touched it she won the car don't tell me you're damn right she won the car yeah, yeah. yeah. 
You dropped the car if you could answer the question. Are you, are you happy about this, June? I'm, yes, I'm delighted. Well, you should be. Have you got a car already? No. You don't have one? No. Oh, what a nice. Well, this would be a wonderful prize for you if you can win it. Now, uh, nice. Max is rearranging his drum kit. <laughs> Here's a hat. Can I have that? Um, sure. Board? All right, now here's the way it... <laughs> you just take your time, too. Whatever you want to do is okay. <laughs> Not a main last chance. <laughs> and I want us to be friends for the next eight weeks. <laughs> here's the way it works. I have to ask you this question, and we are not allowed... No, we are not allowed to help. Oh, hang on. You're particularly me. I'm not allowed to help at all. I can give you no help nor advice whatsoever. I'll be over here if you want me. <laughs> All right, now I have to ask you this question. I'll ask you the... Uh, I'll ask you the question twice. Don't answer it right away. We'll give you 30 seconds of think music, right? And then I'll come back and ask you the question again. All right, so you can have time. Oh, hey, hey, I want you to see these two questions. I can't see through these rotten eyelashes. <laughs> Oh, come on. <laughs> Who would know the first one? I don't even know either one. Harry I... Jones wouldn't know that. Try the, uh... Oh, try the, try the second one. Oh, I don't think yeah. so. But don't, yeah, or oh, well, rather than the first one. Oh, yeah. But don't, add, you know, just take your... Moon <laughs> of Manacore. Oh. I feel like Dorothy no more. <laughs> Take your time. Don't do anything until, you know, I give you the wink. Okay. What important metal is derived from bauxite? What? Don't answer it. What important metal is derived from bauxite? You know, you there's one clue which you really could give, and it would not, everybody would agree with it, and that is Don's pronunciation of it could be different to mine, because Don is American and... I, as you know, I'm Czechoslovakian. <laughs> what important metal is derived from bauxite? 30 seconds of think music now. I just want you to see, before we, ask, before we ask any answer to this other one, the first question was, many attempts have been made to invade England. In what year was the last successful attempt? <laughs> Ready for that? Now they're invading us. <laughs> <laughs> what important metal is derived from bauxite? Oh, come on. Don would say it one way, I'd say it the other. You've got lots of it in your kitchen. Aluminium. Aluminium is right! <laughs> I didn't help. Didn't didn't help at all. I am so glad. I'm so happy that you didn't help her. Didn't help at all. <laughs> all right. Good on you, love. Congratulations. Enjoy, Joyce. We'll Lovely. see you in the beginning of the year. We'll present you with a car, all right? There we go. Thank Bye. you. And awesome awesome tonight on Don's Wheel, you have the chance of winning these fabulous prizes. The Moran Studio 100 Home Music System. The value is around $1,000. All components are coordinated perfectly, providing great Moran sound for your home. And you'll bring back the good times with this magnificent Kimball home piano. The value is $1,895. Kimball is available from Paul Hayward Organs of High Point Dandenong and now at Mount Gravy and uh, Mount Gravatt in Brisbane. Mount Gravy. Also, this modern-made fully automatic wall oven and stainless steel four-burner hot plate featuring rotisserie, separate grill and electronic ignition. The value is around $1,000. And the sensational three-piece Sauber Boston Lounge Suite, the value is around $1,200 from Sauber's one-acre showroom in Dandenong plus national distribution. Who we got on the line here? Mort, on the phone, we've got fr from uh, Shaw Street in Ulverston in Tasmania, uh, Miss Terry Jones. Hello? Hello, Don. Hi, what's all that noise in the back? The family or something? Yeah, yeah, they're making a bit of a racket watching you. Okay, Terry, listen, we've got a little problem here because we've got a time problem, a few other things. What number would you like to start on, mate? The devil's number, thanks, Don. The devil's number, 13. Okay, and what's your star sign? Uh, Taurus. Taurus. Okay, well, pretty close. We'll move it right around there. Okay, and now if Here you land go. on Taurus, you get a very special prize. Here we go now. Hang in there.
Sorry, you got yourself a nice trip, I think. Yes, it looks very nice. Just a minute, Bert. I'll tell you about it. Here you go. You're going to Dunk Island, Terry. Good evening. Hi, Bert. Good, thanks, mate. You can dunk yourself in warm waters on the TAA Dunk Island holiday for two. <laughs> you'll enjoy relaxing amid this lush tropical hideaway, and you'll fly there and back with TAA the friendly way. Very nice. Y are you watching us live? Yes. You look very good. You look like Dolly Parton. <laughs> <laughs> She's blonde, isn't she? <laughs> oh, I see what you mean. I'm with you now. <laughs> yeah. You know where Dunk Island is? Yes, yes. It's approximately 900 miles from, uh, from Brisbane. Okay? Yep. Okay, he's done. Okay, Terry, here's the question. Which actor who started his career as a dancer but later became renowned for his gangster tough guy image won an Oscar for his performance in Yankee Doodle Dandy? Hmm? Uh, James Cagney. Hmm, you got it. Okay. Right. Good on you, Terry. Right, you if you'd like to be on Don's Wheel, post office box 333, Richmond, Victoria, 3121 hey, for Mark, next just year. A minute, just a minute. Don't go to the commercial. No. I just, I know. you got to go, but we'll... But we won't really have a lot of time to talk because we could do the cold closing piece. I would like to personally thank you for a really wonderful year and a delightful year. I'll see you in a couple... I'm putting the hair out of your face. <laughs> <laughs> for a wonderful year, delightful year. And as always, it's terrific working with you. And they always try to find a chink, mate, but they can't find it. You thank know? you, mate. May I just Too ask right. you one thing? Yeah. One kiss for you, mate. No, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Great news, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a fantastic year. And they don't come better. Thank you. Okay. We'll be back after this break. We've got to say goodbye. We've got to appreciate you. Well, here we are again, <laughs> me and Twinkle Toes. Uh, along with Air New Guinea, we're sending a lucky family to the west coast of the United States for one week. Yeah, you indeed. Know, right? yeah. You know, all the year we've had a lot of fun uh, at the expense of Air New Guinea. Some friends of mine just back from a magnificent trip with Air New Guinea. And it really is one of the, the magnificent airlines of the world. And apart from uh, having the opportunity of flying Air New Guinea on this trip, Mum and Dad and the kids will take away with them $1,000 in traveler's checks. American and, Express yeah, traveler's checks. Yeah, and stay in Honolulu. Honolulu, Honolulu and to cut off the, we also have arranged tickets to Disneyland, which well, should be magnificent. And this dream holiday, specially tailor-made for us by Air New Guinea, will be the ultimate in uh, luxury. Now, the, the word family, yeah. what does that represent? Well, it's very important. It, it represents one or two parents and their natural-born uh, children, or the children of that family. In other words, uh, you know, if you happen to win the prize, don't rush out and adopt seven kids. Uh, it's important that it's, it's the kids and the family. It doesn't matter how big they are, though. Okay, now, in this, uh, you can see how deep this is. It's uh, packed full from there. And these are all of the letters that have been sent in to the barrel and the wheel over the entire year. One lucky family out of this is going to get that wonderful trip to the west coast of the United States. Uh, it's going to be chosen by Bert, who is going to slide down this magic slippery dip. There you are, Fatima. A drum roll for Fatima, please. You right? Yeah. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. Are you sure it's okay? Are you positive? It's all right. Your hair looks wonderful. Are you, you sure? can get up. Yes. Are you, are you, you wouldn't lie to me, would it you? It looks fine. You I'm can't see you. the graphs, Let can me you? see the back. No, no, it's okay. okay. It's fine. Just keep it going. Yes. Okay. It's wonderful. Right, okay. Okay. Now, there's a shovel. Oh, not again, Don. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to clean up after you again. <laughs> and you dig down in there and pick out one or something. Oh, you'll find good tonight. Right. <laughs> Hang on. Hang on a sec. <laughs> it's a great idea, isn't it? <laughs> People chilling in like say, most unusual ballet tonight. <laughs> Add this I'll tell you what you do. Take a shovel, so toss it up in the air. Tell and I'll, do. I'll put my hand right in, eh? That's it, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Don, there's someone down here. <laughs> Here we go. You got one? Yep. Okay. Hang on a sec. Yep, yep. All right. Got it? Mrs. G. I. Newton of, uh, <laughs> of Elkington. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's from uh, North Ride in New South Wales. It's Mrs. Merlin Cook. 
Mrs. Merlin Cook of Northride, New South Wales. Your family are going to the West Coast, and uh, you'll have yourself a lovely holiday. Compliments of Andrew G. And thank you all of you who have participated in the reel over the years. You come down here and meet the second reel. Give him a hand and get him out of there, will you? Uh, we've got something else oh that we... Oh, my God, Kelvin kind of lives again. <laughs> <laughs> Kelvin, Kelvin. Let me have that for a minute, just for a second. Uh, as, you, as you may or may not know, uh, uh, it's a very, very important uh, uh, role that's played on this uh, program, uh, the part of the musical director, and we have had a terrific fella uh, doing it for us uh, the last couple of years. Graham Lyle is probably uh, one of the most talented arrangers and one of the most talented musicians I have ever had the pleasure of coming across. And um, uh, we couldn't have asked for a better job. Graham's leaving us. He's moving on to greener pastures. He's going to become a cow. <laughs> he's going to, no. <laughs> Graham is leaving. He's, he's moving on to, uh, to other things, which he has decided to do. Cab driving. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but he has, uh, it has been a, an awfully good experience working with him. Uh, we worked both live and concert, and I'm sure you've had uh, as much pleasure as I have. He's, uh, in my 23 years, he's the best I've worked with. Yeah, that's, and that's a big compliment coming from the fellow himself. Come over here. We've got something new. This is, uh, <coughs> this, is, uh, this is from all the boys on the show, and knowing your reputation uh, when we go out on the road with the girls and all of that, uh, Bert's your date tonight. <laughs> no. But uh, this is from us. You can open it later. But we thank you for a fantastic job. It's a glow weave shirt. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Two glow weave shirts. Thank you for doing a, a really terrific job, Graham. We are Thank all, you, you know, extremely proud to have had the pleasure of working with you. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. He's Thank not much at making speeches. He gets very embarrassed easy. Okay. Would you like to say anything? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'd just like to say that a musical director is only as good as the band around him, and I'd personally like to thank this fantastic band for four years of unbelievable hard work. Thanks, fellas. Okay. I, uh, I'd like to take the opportunity, um, uh, to thank all of you who have uh, stayed with us and watched us uh, throughout the course of this year. Uh, we've had um, our share of ups and downs this year, and um, I, res I reckon a, a fair share of uh, uh, what I call uh, gutter journalism that uh, never seemed to get off our back. But if I had to uh, uh, brag just a little to talk about our accomplishments, uh, two shows a year, uh, two shows a week, uh, throughout the course of the year, we started off with four, uh, came back to two, and uh, it managed to succeed for us. The program is sold in 14 markets uh, in the United States, which is a lot better than some American programs because they can't even get on the air. And, uh, and uh, we have been very well accepted in uh, the larger cities in New York and Los Angeles and Chicago especially. And although it may not mean a lot to some people, they would be maybe sitting back and saying, so what? The point is that uh, we are now doing a program that represents Australia, a country that I have had an association with for 15 years. Uh, I don't know how much longer I have to stay around to prove my loyalty to the country and to Australian talent. I don't know uh, uh, what more you have to do to, uh, to prove that you do care. But I think the end result will be uh, the acceptance in the United States of not only our program and what we do and uh, a tremendous accomplishment for this place filled with people who uh, came up from the, uh, the, the beginnings. Uh, everybody that works in here started at some other task and worked their way up to the jobs that they have now. And they are very proud at GTV9 of what they can do. It's probably the best production house in the entire country. And people scramble to get in here to work. Uh, people love uh, the excitement and the atmosphere of working at GTV9. And I feel that uh, overall, not just speaking for myself, I'm only one cog in this machinery. You can never get bigger than the product itself. Uh, if I was to leave tomorrow, it might take a little while, but there'd be somebody else here doing this show, and this team here would back them uh, to their fullest and probably make them as successful. And I owe uh, any 
iota of success that I would have to every single one of these guys in here, floor crew, cameramen, musicians, uh, uh, our set designers who have just won a big award, by the way, for what they've done, uh, uh, our choreographers, I reckon our dancers are terrific. Uh, they sit with their mouths open in astonishment in America when they look at this program because they can't believe that we can produce what we do produce live. Now, maybe that's patting ourselves on the back, but I think it's about bloody time somebody did. And if I have to do it, I'll do it. Um, I'd like to personally thank Bob Phillips. Uh, he took on a, t a tremendous task this year. He had a tremendous pair of shoes to fill. He did a, a wonderful job. Uh, and um, we will welcome with open arms a gentleman who's taking over his position uh, next year. We will be back next year. We will be bigger. We will give you our best. We hope uh, better than ever. And uh, we just had a lady call in. <laughs> some lady just, this is the truth, some lady just phoned in and said, why wasn't Bert on the wheel tonight? <laughs> we have to cope with them all. One of the highlights of this year to me uh, I'll just tell you a little story here, uh, if I can wax on just a bit. Uh, earlier in the year, a couple of friends of mine, uh, you know, Peter Brandon and, uh, and Peter Flanagan up in uh, Sydney, I talked to them about wanting to do a song about Australia, something that I had seen Anthony Newley do in America. And uh, the words were coming out of my mouth as Peter Allen was doing a song that I reckon has become close to being uh, a, not so much a national anthem, but uh, on an equal with uh, God Bless America as far as this country is concerned. There are many of us um, who call Australia home and will continue to call Australia home. I do. And uh, a large number of Australian artists that have appeared on the program with us do call this country their home. So uh, for all of us, from all of us, to all of you, we thank you for your support uh, for this year. And uh, to all of those Australian artists who appeared on the program, and gave us their best, we thank them as well. And this song is not only a tribute to them, but I think uh, a tribute to all of us who work here and all of us who live here. And we thank Peter Allen for writing it, because like I said, I think it's one of the highlights of, uh, in music of the year. Let's see.
Here's all our regulars.